And remember, of course, we're doing this uh, for, for science. This is an educational experience, completely, looking at how well it can integrate logically, feasibly, what, done, what is done well. It's all for that. And of course, no other reason for science. Greetings, I am Shad, also known as the patron saint of machiculations, sticks, wearing swords on the back, shooting on the outside of a bow, and boob armor. How did I come to be the patron saint of these things? Well, sometimes things just happen. And who am I to deny such accolades? I will gladly defend each one of those things, which is the purpose of this video. Kind of, because the boob armor must flow. And so, in case you are not up to date on the saga of the boob armor, I've got, I've got several videos that you can check out where I actually go into detail. There's far more historical precedent than many people realize to justify some types of fantasy styled boob armor because armor historically did reflect aesthetics, design style, even physical features. And so after going through many videos, you know, is there historical precedent? How dangerous is it really? And is the physicality of the female form, does that justify it? Okay, in different things. And what type of armors would you need? Uh, more space in the upper section uh, for a woman. All those are covered, okay? What I also like to do is have a look at the types of fantasy boob armor depictions that have been done in fantasy art, most predominantly, to see which ones are a bit more valid, which ones are, of course, going too far. And so how we rate them is, would this be functional boob armor? Would it be unfunctional? Is it even boob armor? Okay, does it even qualify? Because sometimes there are other things that get misunderstood. And even if it is not functional, could there be precedent culturally for the fashion style? That's what we'll be doing in this video. It's a part two, I've already done it before, but the boob armor must flow because there's a lot of it. And just like I said in the previous video, uh, you can find these images everywhere. Pinterest is one of the best resources, it's flooded on there. Unfortunately, though, you can't find where the art comes from because they get reposted online again and again, and uh, I can't find out who the original artists were. If you know who the original artists were, do share a comment, okay, giving them appropriate credit, and we're going to dive into it. And by the way, the interesting thing is, okay, is integrating um, uh, this design style in fantasy, and some is perfectly modest, completely functional, it just is differently shaped, okay? And then there are other ones that, like I said, can go a bit further, but could they be justified uh, logically in the world setting? And it's all a matter of world building and the world setting that you're doing. And this is what I did with my own novel, Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror. Female warriors are far more common in this world, and as a result, armor that presents the female form definitely exists. And you can actually check out this story in a far greater visual form, the graphic novel adaptation of my book, Shadow of the Conqueror, Enemies of Self, which is still available for a very short time, but if you get in quickly, you can get it, which you can get over on Indiegogo. If you like comic books, you're going to love my graphic novel, and if you've never tried graphic novels before, this is a great entry point because, look, I, I pulled out all the stops. We've got some of the best art that you can buy. Mike S. Miller, he's an industry vet veteran and I was reading the other day and I know it's my own work but I just got pulled in and I found it so immersive. Graphic novels are brilliant because a picture really is worth a thousand words. If you haven't tried one before give my graphic novel a go in fact we're selling the hardcover at the cost of a soft cover so it's a brilliant deal and I really feel you're gonna love the story. What's the story? Well Michael Kramer says it best. The tale of a deposed tyrannical emperor who embarks on a journey towards redemption. The 82-year-old Dalen, once known as Dalus the Conqueror, is cursed, becoming a youth, and obtains the mythical powers of the legendary Arch Knights. Battling inner demons, his violent and cruel inclinations, and enemies both old and new, he ventures onward trying to fight back the growing darkness threatening the world. After all, who better to hunt monsters than the greatest monster the world has ever known. There are collector covers, and if you really want something special, we're also doing Leatherbound. Not only Leatherbound for the graphic novel, but the novel that it's based on. Well, I'm releasing this 
second edition version of it and you can get that in collector covers as well as leather bound as well something really special i love leather bound so much so those are available for a short time make sure you get your copy because we can absolutely have great stories awesome heroes again even when there are such bad stories and media being made well this is what i'm doing i'm trying to give us some great stories once again and if we can push this indiegogo campaign as far as possible i'm going to be reinvesting it to just make more so do share it with your friends, support it if you can. Thank you to everyone who has, and I can't wait to get you your copy. Interesting, to begin with, we start with one that's honestly not too bad. It's perfectly reasonable shaping around it, has a very feminine form. I actually really like how a dress is integrated into it, which makes it look even more feminine. And you can see that there's actually armor underneath the dress, and so she is properly protected. One of the kind of things that, you know, is a pet peeve. We saw this in the last boob armor video, and this is actually very common with fantasy armor in general, because we also looked at just general fantasy armor, because, you know, the guys, we want to see what the guys are wearing sometimes as well. Uh, and it's a very common thing in fantasy armor. See, see these um, tassets? Instead of having a proper fold, which covers the whole kind of waist area, they just have side things. And, and, and it's like, there's nothing protecting the front area. And sometimes there wasn't, all right? But when you go to the trouble of attaching like armor that goes lower down on the waist, why are you ignoring the front area? And so in historical armor, you usually have a whole fold. And that can be integrated in a really interesting and good looking way with uh, the feminine form, because sometimes it looks a bit like a skirt and you could integrate it and make it look a bit like a skirt. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm not really, I, I just don't like what they do here because it's not a fold and it's not proper tassets, right? Tassets are usually extensions that hang underneath a fold and historically, I can think of no examples, maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't also seen very few examples of them hanging from the actual bottom of the breastplate. Now, the breastplate might go a little too low for movement right there, see how low it is? Uh, but overall, this is a gorgeous piece of art and uh, I give it a, a thumbs up. This is effective move. <laughs> Boo bummer. Hmm. I just, I don't think it's that protective. Just, just, I don't know what's giving me that impression here. Yeah, there seems to be a couple of open areas. So this isn't even boob armor. This is bikini armor. Uh, could it be justified in the culture? Well, it depends. Different cultures have different modesty standards. I do have a video talking about that. And so this is clearly inspired by uh, Greek kind of hoplite Spartan-esque armor. And the Greeks, well, well, sometimes they just fought naked. There's, there's images on uh, vases and stuff like that where you see these Greek warriors, they just have a shield and nothing else. And so this is actually a step up in some of the levels of modesty that the Greeks wore. Uh, so it actually could be justified aesthetically where it's not meant to be armor. I mean, though, interesting, with, with this type of setup, right, if you have a really, really big shield, and the shield probably isn't big enough, but if it was bigger than that to the point where it actually covered from your knee all the way up to the shoulder, all you really need after that, uh, depending on the type of warfare, is a helmet, braces, and greaves. And it kind of covers that. Like, the, the greaves, that they look like effective uh, armor, and in conjunction with a larger shield, this would actually be completely feasible and logical. See, you, you think I was just going to rip it apart. Like, this useless fantasy armor where they're just wearing your bikinis. Like, a historical precedent. That's what we go on, on here. And, yes, the Greeks sometimes fought... Just a shield and nothing. Complete starkers. Go write that down, write that down. <laughs> Justification. <laughs> Look at this one. This one, actually, well, ooh, there are problems upon further inspection. So the general shaping around the bust, right, right here. My, my sword, my sword pointer. I point with a sword. Does it not to mean anything? Okay, I'm not insinuating anything. Even though people in the past did associate the sword with certain things. Just look up the uh, translation of the word sheath. Anyway, uh, so the shaping on the breastplate really are uh, really good. Okay, this is perfectly practical. Okay, it's a very um, slight kind of, uh, you know, swelling. Uh, expansion, increase. So it shows some, some shape for the boobs right there okay but it's actually subtle it's not over the top uh the the problem where this armor falls apart is this spike thing it's going right down there now the problem is is that it's all one piece and so there would be no kind of uh bending so so there would be no bending like that it would just be solid and so when she bends down guess what's going to get stabbed into her crotch 
It's not a good feature of that armor at all. That's a bit bizarre. And of course, uh, these hanging down things, they're, they're just aesthetics. What are, what, are they, what are they even for? They're not really protecting anything. But for fancy things, I don't know, it is increasing the weight. The, the metal collar thing is a bit weird. See this metal collar thing that's going around? Aesthetics? maybe and oh, oh look at those high heels now uh, Jill Bearup actually shout out to her has some really great videos talking about the practical feasibility of high heels in combat and uh, one of the interesting takeaways from memory sorry if I got this wrong Jill but from memory if the high heels going down to a narrow point very unstable but you could get away with some type of lifts not sure it, to the extent of high heelness you could get if they actually had a bit more of a solid base instead of going down like that they kind of maybe swelled out or had anyway more solidity more solid thing now i'm not saying women can't run in heels or do impressive things in heels but increases the likelihood vastly so of twisting your ankle and and all of that and there are designs which actually work much better and more stable not this design here and so i'm not necessarily against the integration of high heels in female armor by the way you know, you know, you do know guys wore high heels historically. Look at the French, all right? Especially around the Fr French Renaissance and stuff. If not wearing full high heels, there's certainly a lot of lift in the heel section, okay? I know, like, with fantasy armor, we usually integrate a modern aesthetic and style. That's why we don't see cod pieces everywhere in fantasy armor, even though historical. Uh, and also, high heels are usually worn by women, not men. I get that, I get that, and this is fantasy looking at the modern aesthetic, and so I'm not necessarily against high heels and fantasy armor if it's actually, I don't know, done with, with a bit more logic behind it, make it make them lifts with more flat, stable base or something like that. I want to go back because look, she's uh, high, high, that, that. moving a bit closer in. Look, look at that high heel right there. It's a very narrow high heel. All right, we've got to pay attention to the heels. We let some heels slide in the last video, not this one. And remember, of course, we're doing this uh, for, for science. This is an educational experience, completely, looking at how well it can integrate logically, feasibly, what, done, what is done well. It's all for that. And of course, no other reason for science. Hmm, all right, all right, interesting. This one does qualify as clearly an attempt at boob armor. It's not like a bikini thing and stuff. It's actually more armor around, right, right, you know, in the midsection here, but it's pretty exposed at the top. And she's wearing enough metal to justify that. It seems to be this is meant to function as a type of armor. It's not purely aesthetic because there's, there's a decent amount, like, especially the pauldrons. The pauldrons make, all right, this gives the feel. This is feels like more it was meant to be defensible like you know fantasy armor designs and it's failing in the functional aspect this would not be very functional at all and i don't think it qualifies for the fantasy one and uh, we got we got look there's gonna be high heels in a lot of these uh so no this is a fail very impressive piece of artwork though of course oh hey this one's this one's interesting look I like looking at a lot of different designs because they always bring a different kind of flavor or angle or interpretation, which is just good to comment on. So what we see here is a very short breastplate, but a breastplate that is very clearly shaped to get add a bit more room for women. Uh, and so this is most definitely a type of boob armor. It's a short breastplate. Uh, and uh, I don't see many examples of these historically uh, that would add, like, if you're going to go to the trouble of having, you know, this upper part protected, why not the rest, okay? Uh, I don't think, you know, what she's wearing underneath is like a type of, no, it's not exactly a jerk, it's more like a leather coat. That doesn't really function as armour, but the, the pauldrons um, uh, look really, really good. Ooh, nice sword design there as well. I mean, oh, might be a bit overweight, but overall, I actually quite like that sort of design. Uh, and uh, high heels again, but high heels integrate in kind of fantasy uh, boot, you know. And by the way, this type of boot design is more Renaissance than medieval. You don't see like high boots coming up with big cuffs at the top in the medieval period. It's more rena Renaissance, but they kind of, they like to integrate in fantasy, and I'm perfectly okay with that. I think it looks really good. Um, and so there's some good elements to it. Uh, you know, look at, the, look at that solid bracer right there. It's a good bracer. There is more right done with this picture than wrong. I give it a thumbs up. Very interesting. So there is some... I, 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 I said interesting a lot. So the helmet. Starting with the helmet, okay? It's like a, a fantasy interpretation of a bar boot. Or is it bar butte? Uh, but a bar boot helmet. Right there, okay? With an extra kind of like fitting at the top. Is that so it can actually slide down? Yeah, those eye holes there. If it is, that'd be an interesting thing. 
Pauldrons, not so sold on, but oh, we, you know what we need to focus on, okay? This section right here, because uh, is that functional? Mostly, and it's not over the top either. Uh, uh, I don't know, why are there holes right here? That's, that's odd, that is odd. And then it also has the same error of it's coming down too low at the front, so it'll just go like right there. So breastplates, they wanna end, oh look, right here at the waist, about right here, okay? Uh, this is why this brigandine has a shape like this. And so that enables you to bend and curve really easy. Like, see this, do you see what's happening here, all right? And so when you bend this way, and brigandine, because it's segmented, it can, you know, go on on those sides much, much easier and enables movement. This was like solid and it didn't have that flex. So uh, Brigandine can get away with it. And with a breastplate, you usually end here and you have a fold as a separate piece. And so they would also have that shape. So the fold would also bend up a bit, but by having that shape, you can do it as well. This one doesn't really have such a wasp kind of biting in shape right here. And then it has something going down a bit further, which is a bit bizarre. I don't know what these are doing here. If this would actually it had extra weight, is it just knee pads? Maybe knee pads. I like the design of the gauntlets. Those are those are pretty cool. Interesting design though. Uh, okay, okay. Breastplate going too low, a bit bit pokey there, right, right where it's gonna go. There's a window opening, like this is fairly heavily armored, and so well, it's just, I don't, I don't, it's for acidity, like showing off the boobs. It's, it's, it's like uh, the Power Girl boob window thing, right? In armor, it makes no sense. It's really dumb in armor. Uh, I don't, it's weird because there are other moment things I don't mind about it, like the gorget here, all right? That looks all right. Uh, pauldrons, not sure I'm a fan of. I like the gauntlets. I don't mind the greaves here. I think the knee guards are good. It looks like they're high heels, can't really see it. But I also like the integration of the skirt on the side. It has a nice, really interesting flair. It's an aristocratic kind of flair. So there's good things to like about it, but the, the boob opening is just makes it fail. It's not practical. Oh, I like this one. This one, you see a distinct line of where the breastplate ends and the fold begins, okay? We see some more practical greaves, pretty good gauntlets there, pauldrons, uh, but we do need to check something. I'm not sure this actually qualifies as boob armor. This just looks like standard normal armor that a woman is wearing. Have we been fooled? It's just, it's normal. No, I, I don't, not boob armor. I'm sorry. Still good armor, but it's not boob armor. Though I'm, yeah, I'm double, I'm, du I'm questioning myself because there, it is a little bit, you know, um, shaped towards the bust. Is it? Maybe it's like on the line, don't you think? Oh, hey, this one, this one actually, it, it's looking pretty sexy and it doesn't look completely unfunctional. Like that breastplate there, it ends at the right kind of bending point where you'd want it. The shaping around the breasts, perfectly functional, not over the top, okay. And so I don't think that's uh, overly exaggerated and, it, and it's more like kind of a, a connected bulge. Bulge is usually associated with something else. Anyway, so, but, um, and, uh, it's not like two defined boob cups. When it's more of just like an increased shape to pronounce the bust, it always seems a bit more, I guess, modest uh, or reserved or undertone, and it just kind of fits. Now, sometimes having asymmetrical pauldrons, even one pauldron, can work depending on the type of combat you're doing. And here is an interesting point. She is using what is clearly a one-handed rapier-like weapon, which usually gets presented forward in the style of combat you, that you do. And so your body is usually angled this way. And so if you're ever going to have uneven kind of protection, you would put more protection on the side that it would be facing your opponent more. And so that pauldron should actually be on her main sword arm. Wouldn't weigh it down too much because it would be connected on to you. it's really resting on on your torso not necessarily your arm and your arm doesn't have to even if it moves it a little bit you're not lifting too much weight there okay and the gauntlets would be increasing the the fatigue on your hand far far more uh people of course were able to do it historically and uh, and so that would be the only kind of no, it's kind of a criticism. It's more of an observation over a criticism, but many of the other parts, very fantasy inspired. It looks sexy, it looks great, and the artwork is really top tier. I'm not necessarily, I don't think I'm the biggest fan of the sword design, uh, but this is pretty good. Pretty, pre actually, I, thought, I would even say this is very good. I like it. This one I actually recognize as from, I think it's actually a concept design from Dragon a no dragon it is dragon age yes dragon age uh and a type of gray warden designed armor this is 
basically flawless in its execution. Like the shaping on the breastplate, chef's kiss. Uh, it's a very like historically inspired type of medieval helmet. I'm not it comes down quite significantly right there, which might poke when you lower your head. Uh, but gauntlets, greaves, perfect. And look at the high heels. That's not that big. They are pretty narrow, okay? If they just had a bit of a more of a reverse uh, taper on them, they will, they will probably get away with it. So it's actually not flawless. There's, but the, the flaws in it is very small. This is nearly flawless in terms of execution. Look, the breastplate doesn't go down too far, right at the, the waistline where you'd be able to bend. Uh, so that's really effective. And I like the additional kind of line work they have on the breastplate, adding a bit of uh, artistic flair to it which makes it look really good this is this is it is top tier with only a few flaws hey okay this is this isn't bad and it, like in terms of having two separate breast shapes it's not over the top uh, and so I think that works quite well now when people say the middle portion like right here rests on the sternum and would strike like right here by the way this right this uh, brigandine looks like it is uh, close to my chest, but even it has a small little air gap there that you'd still get away with here because look at the shape. See how there's a line coming up right here? That's showing that this center point is actually moving up off the chest a bit, which is perfectly enough. And even if it was resting on the chest completely, it's nowhere near as dangerous as people think, okay? The type of strike that you would need to transfer enough force through that point right there onto the sternum, okay, would be so high that you'll probably damage them, transfer concussive or blunt force through many other areas on the armor. And in fact, historically, there were parts on the armor that rested far more close to the body than others that funneled strikes into the thing, like the actual line between the breast and breastplate and the fold. Sometimes that would overlap, and so there's still metal there. See how it can curve in like that, and sometimes it can be really tight. That funnel strikes into a central point as well, but people still made the armor. It didn't mean that they threw a baby out the bathwater and it was still very effective and protective. So when people say, oh, oh, these two boob shapes will just funnel the strikes into the center and crushing the sternum, it's like, do you know, it's, it's made out of metal, okay? <laughs> still very protective. It's like, I don't know, they're just jumping on looking for the uh, criticisms that are not logically justified. Now, what's interesting about this, this breastplate has a bit that kind of lowers further down than the rest, but it's actually still quite high because the sides, instead of the sides resting on the hips, they're even higher up and it comes down there. And the end point of the breastplate is almost still in line with uh, the waistline. And so that makes it still protective with only a little few vulnerable things there. But by having the, you know, the line of breastplate even higher, that would mean there'll be no restriction at all in bending like this. And so this breastplate is actually really good. I'm not a f huge fan of these kind of, is it like metal parts for the belt? I wouldn't call them tassels, they just kind of integrate. Aesthetics, is it, oh, I don't know, yeah, not sure. I do really like the breastplate, really like the, uh, the braces here, they don't look like full gauntlets. And the swords aren't bad either, They're, the cross guards are a bit chunky, but uh, really good. <laughs> oh, mm, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, we might need to go in for a closer look. <laughs> so, it looks like leather armor. Is that, is the, would that be protective? It's protecting the, some of the vital organs, but there's, I don't know, there's like an opening right there and up and this is, yeah, okay. Not sure, so I'm not sure how protective it is, but is it even meant to be protective? Is this just the ascetic style uh, of the world? It's possible. And so this might be able to get the uh, like pass if being logically justified, if this is just a, a fashion style and she's just wearing, I don't know, more a type of clothing that's not really meant to be armor. Huh, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know what, 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 what's throwing me? Is this meant to be leather armor, started leather, or is it brigadine? Are the, and the squares like metal plates? I don't know. Uh, one of the flaws, and you see this in fantasy armor a bit more regularly, right, is that they, you can see the metal plates underneath, like whatever's on the face of it, if it's like thin leather, dress leather, or whatever, and you can actually see the gaps between the metal plates. And it's like, no, if you're gonna have brigandine or anything like that, the plates overlap, so you can't get strikes in between. These don't look like they overlap. Unless it's, it's, I don't know, leather squares on top of, but then is there metal underneath? There's, 
throwing me a little bit. It, it's hard for me to quantify. And then, does it only protect there, and this is only a leather belt, or is it? Is the, does the armor go underneath it? It looks to be poop peeking out a little underneath. We must go in for a closer look for science. Okay, it looks like it's poking out underneath, right? You see, this is, this is the line of the belt, and this is the armor there. And so, all right, there is armor all the way down covering the, uh, the torso. If there is proper torso protection, then she's got like a, you know, what looks to be a leather pauldron there. It could be functional enough leather armor with some problems. Not perfect, it's okay. Yeah, hmm, hmm, hmm. This, this is odd, okay? It looks like she isn't, uh, the, the, the outfit isn't meant to be armor at all. It's all just fashion. We got a skirt, we got boots, uh, we got a cloak, and the only bits of metal armor is uh, some braces with a kind of shoulder piece, and then some type of boob breast armor there, but of course it's not covering the complete torso. There's a, there's, there's a bit of a big open area, and so it would offer very little protection, and it doesn't seem to be the main aesthetic thing about the outfit, so I don't think it's just fashion, it's just wearing armor pieces for the sake of... It's not protection. So this goes into the question, okay, is there a fantasy setting that sometimes wearing like a, I don't know, piece of armor is like wearing a piece of jewelry? Maybe, and if that was the thing... Oh, look at those high heels down there, by the way. Uh, if that was the thing, it would only be aesthetics, and it would be like wearing jewellery, uh, it, but it does look out of place. I'm not sure it integrates with the fashion of this uh, piece perfectly, and so I don't think I can give it a pass. Interesting! There is a number of things to talk about in this one. People might say, there's like these big openings right on her thigh. Well, I was, what would she bother? Okay, first of all, I had the same criticism of the weird side armour bits. If you're going to wear the side armour bits there, uh, why aren't you covering the front? Have a full fold, or just get rid of them. Because there is historical precedent of having armor mainly on the upper body, and ending with either a breastplate or, or a breastplate and fold, because the legs, surprisingly, are not as um, difficult to protect as you might think. You can just withdraw your legs, you know, avoid the attacks and dodge it like that, and uh, they're not as vulnerable in even, like, um, battlefield formations as you might think. And so we see art, medieval artwork on the battlefield of guys just wearing armor on the upper body and regular pants, sometimes tights on the legs. And so, I w I'm surprised I wouldn't criticize the lack of armor on the thighs. And uh, what you usually see, if, they're, if, they're, if you're going to go low armor on the legs, one of the first things that you put armor on is the shins, right there, and then kind of working your way up. And so the type of armor she does have on the legs it follows the logical process of the areas you armor first, and the fact that the thighs are exposed isn't outside of the realm of logic, okay? Uh, then there's odd, other odd things in the armor. She has that weird kind of opening right there on the breastplate, and usually the other ones expose a little bit more, but then she's not exposing skin. She's got leather thing, like, like a leather jerkin with something underneath. So then why do you even have that opening there? <laughs> it just makes a vulnerability in the armor. Uh, pauldrons aren't bad. They've got an interesting segmented design. I'm not sure about, because there's a separate piece in the in the middle there, and then there's a separate piece hanging down on the bottom here, and so it's very segmented, this armor, almost what looks to be needlessly. I do like the line work on the armor. It's a very talented piece of artwork, um, and uh, yeah, but in terms of the actual design, I like, look, I like the gauntlets, I like the, the braces there. Uh, so there's a lot of good things, but there's some flaws as well. Okay, I'm confused. The, uh, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, ah, all right. Um, interesting. So they've integrated the fold, see this part right here, in a very interesting kind of feminine way, making it look like a type of mini skirt with a very pronounced point. That could be functional, but that cross in the middle there looks like it's connecting that there's no actual movement or on the fold to the point where it would dig into your legs if you bent over. So there's a floor. Now, what you have here is a lower part of a breastplate, and that's called a placard. So in some breastplates that actually don't go all the way down, right, they fold underneath a kind of connecting bit, and it's sometimes just together referred to yeah, it's a full breastplate, but no, 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 um, the part that actually folds up over top, what we see here is a placard. And so it looks like she's only wearing a fold and placard odd choice, and I can't see any other armor at all. 
But this looks to be very ceremonial. She looks to be a priestess. And uh, sometimes people integrate pieces of armor in a ceremonial way uh, and is not meant to be uh, defensible at all. That's the vibe I get from this image. And so as a result, I would give it a pass that I think this one could be logically justified by the nature. I don't think it's meant to be protective. It's ceremonial and it's for fashion and it's to add that kind of somewhat, you know, military feature. I like to show a bit more of an imposing look to the uh, fancy religious garb that uh, people might wear. Because sometimes you can imagine like a priest who's got his really fancy robes and everything like that. He just decides to wear a single breastplate to look a bit more militaristic and have some authority when it's not really, he's not going to war. I get that vibe. So I think I can give this one a pass. But I don't think I can give this one. I mean, like the, the smallest little armored kind of, I don't know, bra thing on top of the skirt that she's wearing. Look at those high heels. Wow. Wow. And uh, the only thing I can really compliment is the gauntlets, the pauldrons. Yeah, no, no, it's a fail. Bad boob armor. <laughs> It's one of those ones where you know where they were going with it. It's like not very protective. Let us just say that. Uh, no, no, not good boob armor, not protective. Is it, f f I don't know, aesthetic? Um, yeah, possibly for a very obvious kind of aesthetic, maybe. Oh wow, like we're in the dregs in this one. Like this one's also awful. Oh, it's, what do you it's like? Okay, you see these full greaves there, you see a full gauntlet there, some type of metal circle there, and then everything just jumps the shark everywhere else. It's like openings, it's, it's not good armor. Uh, cultural, aesthetic, I know she's supposed, that looks like she's meant to be a warrior. She's got a full shield on the back and a spear, and uh, you know, I, I'm not giving this one a pass. Not good armor. I don't even see boob armor on this one. She's wearing a, a lot of corsets and then gauntlets and some pauldrons. It's not a, it's a, one of the, we were fooled. It's actually, it's just, just clothing with some armor pieces, not boob armor. Uh, I, there's a closer up version. It's like, yeah, I see no boob armor here. I see boobs, but not armor. <sighs> oh, I'm starting to miss some good designs. We've gotten like number of bad ones in a row. And so this is, this is an odd one because it's more cloth than it is armor and whatever metal pieces, it's more adornments. And so we see like these black kind of uh, shapes in between the pauldrons indicating that the black um, material must be some defensive of some kind. And it's the black material that's covering most of her body there, well, half of her body. And, <laughs> and it's implying that that's actually a type of armor just shaped very closely to her form. But then of course, big opening up top. Not effective, not effective armor as a result. Doesn't get a pass. And this is almost the, a carbon copy of that one in terms of concept. Uh, same issues, same issues apply, okay? Is this one more aesthetic? Stuff? But look at, look at the pauldrons. But the pauldrons are integrated into a jacket, which seems like it's more aesthetic. And so this one, is, is it not armor at all? Is it just aesthetic? Because this one feels like more, it's just uh, fancy clothes. Fancy, sexy clothes that they're going for. But she's definitely a warrior, but warriors sometimes don't need to wear heavy armor. So I'm on the, I'm on the line with those two designs now. Is it leather armor? I can't, it's hard to tell. But no, there's too many openings. It's just, no, not armor, not boob. Also, there's armor pieces, but not, no, it's not good. And this one looks again very aesthetic. It's like the, the, the gold kind of armor pieces integrated in the alphabet. It's not really meant to protect anything. That's pretty clear. Uh, big gauntlety, fisty things. I mean, these look to be armor, the actual like greaves and, and leg protection, all that stuff. Uh, and then uh, is that to also she can block things with the gauntlet stuff, but the uh, torso, you know, outfit doesn't look like armor. And so I don't think we can even justify that it's, that it's boob armor. It's, it's not. This one is clearly meant to be boob armor, but there are some clear failings. One, uh, uh, you have this kind of gorget thing. So if you're, if you're wanting to protect the neck, what about everything else? <laughs> okay. The shape of this uh, breastplate is not good. See, see how it doesn't end on the waist and it just goes further down. Now, granted, there is shaping on it, but it's still hugging her hips pretty tightly. And so if she tries to bend, it's gonna dig in here. Not good maneuverability, not good protection, uh, and, and, and just uh, n nothing protecting her shins, just a you know, knee guard and something on the foot. Uh, and then she's got type of gauntlets. I don't like it. It's not good boob armor, it fails. And this isn't even boob armor again, nice picture. It's like they have armor everywhere else leather armor except the boobs 
<laughs> so it's more fashion integrated, you know, corset kind of thing. Ah, finally, finally, something good indeed. This was, uh, I think, the origin image of uh, the image I used in the first video thumbnail. The thumbnail of the first video I did on Boob Armor. This is the origin. And this is, like, basically chef's kiss, perfect, beautiful, realistic and functional boob armor and uh, what an appropriate one to end off this kind of reaction video to because this is gorgeous and look it even has the artist name in the corner i'm glad that that's there and integrated with a skirt again this is like people might say there's no armor on the legs remember historical precedent for this guys okay sometimes they wore no armor on the legs at all historically and so yeah if a woman was wearing armor and she was doing the same logic she does yeah, no armor on the legs, and if she wants to wear a, a skirt uh, as a part of it, and then armor on the lower legs, so the shins, but nothing on the thighs, there's precedent for that. Pauldrons, uh, helmets, gauntlets, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, chef's kiss. And look, we got some other, you know, shots of it as well with the um, um, uh, helmet down as well. What a beautiful piece of art. So I think that's the artist credit in the bottom corner down there. Uh, credit to him because this is a gorgeous design. I love it. And so if you're going to be incorporating kind of like, you know, women in a more combative role in fantasy knights than they were represented historically, and you wanted to have the armor reflect a more feminine aesthetic, right? But be more grounded in historical designs. Use this as a perfect example of the best way to execute this concept. And look, there's even more, like uh, every angle. And there we go, having a look at multiple different fantasy feminine armor designs, boob armor, for science and education, because I feel it was educational. There are some interesting uh, things that we observed from all these different types of armor. It's fun doing these types of videos. And, you know, of course, it's mixed in with all the other content we do here on Shadowversity. If you want to see more of this type of content, the other content I do, do Remember to subscribe and stick around. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. And until then, farewell.